Hello, welcome to ES346 Basic Thermodynamics. These are examples, and the example we're going to look at today is multi-stage compression. I'm Rourke Peterson. So here's the example problem we're going to look at. We have air, and it's compressed in a reversible adiabatic compressor at a rate of 0.15 kilograms per second. And we're asked to find two things. What is the power requirement if this is done in a single stage? And what is the power requirement if it's done with two-stage compression? So over on the right here, we have a diagram. And this is showing a two-stage compression. Here are our inlet conditions, 100 kPa and 27 degrees Celsius. And if it's occurring in two-stage compression, it goes to an intermediate pressure of P sub x. Then heat is removed. It's still at a pressure of P sub x, but it has now been cooled down to 27. And it goes into the second stage compression and comes to a final ultimate high pressure of 625 kilopascals. So we'll go ahead and solve this problem first, doing the single stage compression, which means my inlet conditions will be 100 degrees, or sorry, 100 kPa and 27 degrees Celsius. And we're going to go all the way to 625 kPa in a single step. A couple other important things to notice here is we've got air. And so under these conditions, we can assume that, that air is acting as an ideal gas. So it's occurring in a reversible compressor. So we're going to be looking at the minimum work requirement. And it is also adiabatic. Now, since it's reversible and adiabatic, that means this is going to be an isentropic compression. Now, if you also remember, when we have uh, um, some heat transfer, we have this value of, of n, which quantifies the amount of heat transfer. And n occurs somewhere between 1 and k. n is that polytropic exponent. Well, now, since we have absolutely no heat transfer at all, it's adiabatic, we're going to be using this value of k because it is also reversible. So we can go ahead and, and calculate what that is. There's an equation on our equation sheet, and we've also seen in the notes, where the work requirement is going to be the mass flow rate times krt1 over k minus 1. I'll go ahead and write the whole equation here. p2 over p1, and this is to an exponent of k minus 1 over k minus 1. So there's the, the work requirement. This is extensive because we're multiplying by the mass flow rate. And this is the value of k. And recall that k is simply equal to the ratio of the heat capacities Cp over Cv. And for air, that has a value of about 1.4. It's a weak function of temperature. But for now, we'll go ahead and just assume it's constant at 1.4. Alrighty. Um, so we're given what the mass flow rate is in the problem. We know the value of K for air is 1.4. T1, which is that initial temperature, is 27. So we can do that. We're going to need to convert that into absolute um, degrees before we plug it in there. And we have our two pressures, P2 and P1, which is 625 or 125. So this is just a matter of plugging a bunch of numbers in. So let's go ahead and do that. Our mass flow rate of 0 0.15. And now I'll go ahead and put in this ratio 1.4, my value of R for air 0 0.287. And my initial temperature in Kelvin is 300 Kelvin. And that will be over 1 minus 1.4. And now we've got our ratios of pressures. So 625 is the final, 100 is the initial. Uh, K minus 1 is 0 0.4 over 1.4. And I subtract 1 from that. And I'm going to go ahead and do all of that arithmetic. And this comes out to about 31.1 kilowatts. So there's the power requirement if this was done in a single stage. Um, we could also find out what our, our outlet temperature is. Um, if you recall, T2 over T1 is P2 over P1 to the K minus 1 over K. And we could go ahead and calculate this, this final temperature. But the problem doesn't ask for it, so I'll go ahead and, and just skip that for now. And let's go ahead and now let's do it in terms of uh, two-stage compression. So now we're actually going to have this heat transfer um, occurring somewhere at some intermediate pressure P sub x. And so if we want to determine the ideal minimum uh, middle pressure here, which would minimize the work requirement, we call that P sub x, that intermediate pressure, is the geometric mean of the high and low pressure. So the geometric mean of 625 and 100 kPa. And if I go ahead and calculate that, that tells me my intermediate pressure is 250 kPa. So remember that we're using the geometric mean here, not the arithmetic mean for the intermediate pressure. And before we plug our numbers in, let's just kind of remember what this looks like on a, for example, a PV diagram. So this will be P1 down here. 
this is P2, and there's some intermediate pressure there, P sub X. And if I'm starting off at a low pressure with a relatively higher specific volume, I'm going to be down here, that would be 0.1. And let me just kind of sketch in an isotherm there. So this would be an isotherm. And we could get that just from, from an ideal gas law. This is just the equation that PV is equal to RT, which is equal to a constant. Now, if I do my first stage of compression over here, but it is, it is reversible and adiabatic, I'm not going to follow the isotherm. I'm going to follow an adiabat. And I might go up to about this point right there. And then I've got heat transfer. So I'm at a, at a higher temperature. So here might be another isotherm there, but a higher temperature. And now I have a heat transfer process at constant pressure. So if this is point 0.1. Let me call that point 0.2 and point 0.3. This would be 0.2 here, this would be 0.3, and then my outlet would be 0.4. And now I'm going to go ahead and do another adiabatic compression up there, and that would be 0.4. So once again, I'm going to be at a higher temperature than, than 27. I'm going to have moved up here as well. And you can realize that the, the work requirement graphically, the, the work savings, which is that little area right there. And so in order to determine piece of X, we minimized uh, the total work requirement or maximized the work savings. Okay, so if P sub X is, is the, the minimum, that tells me that the work requirement going from the first step and the second step is the same. So I can calculate just the work requirement for this step and multiply it by 2. So we'll go ahead and do that. So this will be the work requirement. And again, this is going to be a similar equation, so I won't rewrite it again. But there's the mass flow rate, 0 0.15. And then this ratio of KRT, 1.4, 0 0.287, and 300 all over 0 0.4, that's K minus 1. And now I have the ratio of the pressure. And I'm just doing the first stage here. So this will be 250 over 100. So it's P sub X over P1 to the 0 0.4 over 1.4. Subtract 1 from that. And then I'm just going to go ahead and multiply all of that by 2. And that will give me the total work requirement. So if I do all of that arithmetic, that comes out to be 27.05 kilowatts. And, and if we bounce back to our previous example, we had 31.1 kilowatts. Now we're at 27.05. So we have a savings of, oh, say 10 to about 12% there. So not, a, not an insignificant amount by putting in a, a two-stage compressor. Um, so that completes the problem. But I'm going to, I just want to kind of mention a couple of things on, on what this, these compressors look like for, for it. And so here I have a, a picture of a, a uh, two-stage compressor. In fact, actually, first, let's go ahead and look at uh, a brochure that I have. Okay, so here's an industrial compressor brochure from Sauer Compressors. And these are, these are large industrial compressors, as you see here, up to 6,000 PSI. And if you were to kind of just kind of browse through their brochure here, you see their range of compressors that they have. Um, over here on the right, um, they have a uh, two-stage air-cooled up to 600 PSI. Um, three stage, also up to 600 psi. If you want to go up to, up to 6,000 psi, there's going to be required in three and four stage compressors. And in fact, if you go to really high pressures, you can end up doing uh, um, water cooled as well. And let me just kind of show you what these compressors look like. They've got some performance information here, which might be kind of interesting to look at. Not surprising, the power requirement goes up slightly as the final pressure goes up. And we kind of see that from our equations. Um, but here's a, uh, here's a picture of, of a two-stage compressor. And so this, this is, a, is one piston here that's doing the first part of the compression. And then it goes through an intercooler. And then there's a second piston over here on the right-hand side. And so this is a big fan that helps the, the cooling process go on. So now let me go back to this picture of, of our compressor. This picture is a little bit easier to see where we have um, one piston right here that's going to do the first stage of compression. And then the air is going to come out of it. And you see this little this heat exchanger tube here. This is a tube with a bunch of fins to go ahead and, and have a maximum uh, heat transfer. And it kind of comes around. It loops behind it. And then it's going to end up going into the second compressor here. And then it does its second stage compression. So there's this, this cooling loop that goes around there to go ahead and bring it down to its second temperature. So this is a two-stage compressor. And then these are heat exchanger loops that we see there.
Um, let's come back and look at this brochure. There's a couple interesting things we can see. So this was this was a two-stage compressor, and then this big fan here helps the heat transfer. So that previous diagram didn't show a fan, but you would normally have a fan to help drive across those those air those air coils. Um, let's go back and look at some of their their higher. So here's here's a three-stage compressor, and so now you see here's here's one stage. There's the second stage, and there's the third stage as well. And again, we have a big heat exchanger on the t on the front here. Um, and we can go down and now we wouldn't be surprised if we look at at this one here we see this is a four stage compressor we have one on this side two three and you can imagine there's one right behind it that, that corresponds to that to that stage right there and again we have a big fan to go ahead and and uh, cool those off now air to air isn't the greatest um, heat exchange medium it's fairly cheap and so then you can actually go to some of these that are liquid cooled and so we look at this, these are actually liquid cooled um, heat exchangers in here. They have better uh, conductivity. You kind of move through. There's one more we can look at here as well. Multi-stage, but now we've got a, a liquid air um, heat exchanger in there. Just kind of minimizes the shape. So anyway, nothing nothing quantitative there, just kind of nice, I think, sometimes to kind of see what these these look like um, in reality. And now when you see an air compressor, you could just look at it quickly and, and by telling me how many stages you have by simply how many cylinders you see. All right, well, that goes ahead and ends this uh, example.